Hello everyone and welcome to the most requested game of the European Club Cup so far. It's from round 5 and it's uh, board 1 Daniel Darda versus Shahrir Mamedyarov. Uh, I don't know, maybe the H is not silent, maybe it's Daniel Dardha, Belgian Grandmaster. And uh, he already won the Belgian uh, Championship three times and he did it the first time when he was only 13 years old. So very, very strong player, but uh, on the other side of the board it is a former 2800, uh, you know, absolute beast, uh, Shahrir Mamedyarov. So let's see uh, what happened here and why the game was requested so many times. So Daniel has the white pieces and he opens with d4. We have knight to f6 by Shah, uh, c4, g6, and now countering this King's Indian defense uh, setup with pawn to h4. Now it has been played before and even by some very strong players. For example, Magnus Carlsen played it once against Maxim Vashiela Grav and war, uh, won a very nice game. Also, Ding Liren played it against MVL. I think they drew their game. So bishop to g7, knight to c3, knight to c6, and now knight to f3. So the four knights are out, uh, and uh, we have this inclusion of pawn to h4. Uh, and uh, the couple of games that reached this position, uh, d6 was played in all of them, but here we have um, uh, ca uh, sorry, uh, uh, d6 was played by uh, all of them, but here we have castles, and it is now as of move 5 already that we have a completely new game. Now someone mentioned in the previous video that uh, whenever I say it's a completely new game that it's not, that they have access to the new database big database 2023 and there are like hundreds of online games well yes i don't use that database i use a database that only uh takes games from top tier tournaments so uh for example if you and your grandma or or grandfather you know just play a game online uh, somewhere it will be in some database it will just not be in the big one for important tournaments. So usually when I say it's a completely new move, I mean, uh, for, you know, in top tier tournaments uh, where players are rated uh, at least 2000 or above, so something like that. I don't know what the exact criteria is, but of course it is possible that somewhere in the world that this position has been reached somewhere. Uh, but that being said, uh, let's check it out. We have castles and now pawn to d5. Challenging the knight here, we have knight to b4 and now pawn to g3. Here, uh, you could challenge the knight, yes, and you could even get b4 in, but, uh, you know, it could be a little bit dangerous with the bishop, um, uh, bishop's diagonal open like this, and the knight will be very safe here. Uh, c6 will be played, then the knight comes to c7. If you play b5, the knight can come to c5, so it's not really a dangerous uh, expansion for black. So g3, we have pawn to e6 and only now pawn to a3. Knight to a6 and bishop to g2. Continuing development, we have e captures on d5. Of course, it makes sense to open up the position as the white king is still in the center of the board. C captures on d5 and now rook to e8. We have castles and now knight to c5. This is an excellent square for the knight. Um, and uh, of course, uh, while you do want to kick it away with b4 here, it would again uh, n not be advised as it would allow for some very nasty discoveries. So after knight c5, pawn to d6, going after the doubling of the black pawns, and now pawn to c6. Here, Mamidorov says, I'm just going to develop, uh, put my rook here, put my bishop on f8, and I'm going to win that pawn. So that is not the, the best way to treat this position. We have knight to d2, and now we have pawn to a5, stopping pawn to b4 before going after the d6 pawn, b3, and now rook to e6. So why did uh, Daniel push this pawn all the way? Uh, well, he's uh, counting on getting some very, very important tempi on that rook uh, and uh, getting a lot of development in. So queen to c2, of course, you want to get the queen off of the d file. Rook captures on d6, now knight to c4. We have rook back to e6 and now bishop to e3. Now with the idea of uh, chasing away the knight and then getting the, um, uh, the, 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 the full control over the b6 square so here we have bishop to f8 also you have to defend the knight as the knight is hanging and now bishop to h3 attacking the rook here rook back back to e8 and now pawn to b4 so now the bishop and knight have very nice control over the b6 square if uh, uh, shahriar moves the knight but he doesn't of course he plays pawn to d5 now this is hanging okay the knight on c5 is hanging but also the knight on c4 is hanging and also the bishop on h3 is hanging so how do you play this uh, bishop captures on c8, of course, queen captures on c8, and now you just take the piece, bishop captures on 
uh, c5. And how does uh, Shahrir play this? Of course, he does not take back. He plays queen captures on h3 first. Uh, although you could capture back right away. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a bit more uh, poetic. Uh, now threatening knight to g4. And you just want to checkmate the white king. So, of course, knight back to d2. You have to stop this. If you, if you go for bishop captures on f8, then knight g4 just ends the game. So, you have to be ready for this. Knight to d2. Now getting ready to meet knight to g4 with knight to f3. So, the knight on f3 guards the h2 square. Uh, but even this is not possible uh, for reasons that will be revealed. Here we have bishop captures on c5. Uh, grabbing uh, grabbing that piece, b captures and now knight to g4, threatening mate in one. So knight to f3, stopping mate in one, but now feel free to pause the video and try to find this incredible, incredible series of moves for Shahriar uh, while I give you a couple of seconds and also this will reveal why this game was suggested so many times. So have at it. And for those of you who haven't seen it, I'm sure this will be quite a treat to, uh, to enjoy. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, always looking for weaknesses in White's camp around, the, around the, the king. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to e3. Yes, we are going to do it in slow motion, most definitely. There we go, rook to e3. Uh, so big congratulations to everyone who found this. And now you will see why. You cannot take the rook. Uh, of course, you would very much love to, but then you lose control over the g3 pawn. And after this, uh, knight captures on e3, attacks the queen, attacks the rook and threatens checkmate and once you stop checkmate just one check and then you pick up the queen and of course uh, you're just up a full queen so what can you do after rook to e3 well you have to clear the f1 square for your king so rook f to e1 now the king can go to f1 after uh, you uh, eliminated the defender of the h2 square that's kind of the point of rook e3 of course uh, you, you want to eliminate this knight uh, but now comes rook a to e8 and this is the only way to, uh, to win this because now if you just go for this capture it doesn't really do all that much uh, queen h2 checking to f1 and there's no continuation queen h3 check the king actually escapes via the e2 square and it doesn't matter if you go rook to a checking to d2 and the white king escapes so the idea behind this incredible rook a to e8 move is that once you do all of this the king will not have the e2 square as it will be guarded by the other rook so how do you continue now again you cannot capture this now it's even worse as you you just get checkmated right uh, uh, on the spot if king h1 knight to f2 is a nice checkmate and if you go king f1 knight captures an e3 is a nice checkmate so after rook a to e8 uh daniel tried uh queen to d3 he already wants some material so he wants to give up the queen to maybe survive this uh, but uh, as Shahriar will show, it does not work. So rook captures on d3, e captures on d3, and now look at this, rook to e3 once again. That's what uh, Shahriar Mamadiaro played, and he was in this position on move 27 that Daniel Darta resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. So uh, even quicker than what Magnus did to Vincent, it took Magnus 29 moves to, um, uh, to uh, de defeat Vincent, and here Mamadiaro does it in 27 moves with the black pieces, uh, I mean, with with such incredible uh, sacrifices, absolutely incredible. And now, again, the idea is absolutely the same. Of course, the knight here is hanging, and if you just, uh, you're already down a queen. If you give a knight, then uh, there's nothing to talk about here. Uh, so you might capture the rook, uh, or you could even go for rook captures on e3. It doesn't matter. Knight captures on e3, and okay, you could say, I have captures and I have two knights and the rook for a queen. No, you don't. You most certainly do not. Queen captures with check. Doesn't matter where you go because the uh, knight will hang with check. You would go to f1 and then king ca queen captures here. And doesn't matter. If you go here, then you start capturing here. Now you have a knight and the rook for a queen. If you go here, then even queen to h1 check picks up the rook on a1. So there is absolutely nothing you can do here. After rook to e3, the only thing uh, Daniel could do is uh, maybe stand up and, you know, give uh, Shakhtar a nice applause. And I'm, I'm kind of hoping that's what happened because this game would definitely deserve it. So there you have it. You've seen why so many people were requesting it. Shahir Mamidyarov, former 2800, you know, doesn't matter the time for it. Uh, if it's his day, he will uh, deliver a masterpiece like this. Uh, so yeah. That's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. And in the previous video, uh, someone said that, uh, okay, that was a really, really uh, nice game that uh, I, I should have uh, made like at least a 20 minute video on it. But uh, I've, I've covered all the lines that uh, should have been covered. I, uh, I mean, I, I could 
try to make lines longer and make more lines that I just don't think that are relevant. But I, whenever I cover a game, I, I show you all the lines that I myself think are, are worthy of showing. And I, I don't care how long the video takes. Sometimes it's a five minute video. Sometimes it's a 15, sometimes 25. I've even made like a 35 minute video because there were so many lines to cover. But, uh, you know, I, I cover them and the, the length is as, as the length is. So what are you going to do? So yeah, uh, once again, really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. If you have any other gems that you would like to see from the 38th European Club Cup, do use hashtag suggestion in, in the comment section below. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dreamio is the best data lake engine, Kate Ingram, uh, Dennis Charbonneau, Hoodie Guy, and the Bruders on Spotify for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.